What does implementation actually mean? Well, in, at its simplest, you could say it's writing a program to do it. But of course, there's a lot of infrastructure behind that. When you're devising a strategy, a program to do it, one of the first things you have to think about is, um, first of all, what's the logical progression of what I'm trying to do in the program? And secondly, what kind of data structures, arrays, structures, um, whatever, what infrastructure is needed to support all that data while you're processing it. And different people can have different ideas about what the best implementation is. I mean, for example, we've had recently from Alex Pinkney linked lists. This points to null, because we're browsing NASA. And then read a bit about NASA, clicked on the Neil Armstrong article. I mean, some people are so mad about linked lists, they'd use them for anything. And uh, so you say, yes, I implemented it with linked lists because it was right data structure for this particular thing. And then once you've got the data structure, you say, ah, but I felt that the best algorithm to use for this, because it's so similar to what it is, Dijkstra's algorithm, you know, for finding your way from A to B, as it were. So the algorithm and the data structure. In fact, it's, I think Niklaus Veer did a book once called Algorithms plus Data Structures equals Programs. So it's down to saying, what's your choice of both of these things? Justify why you did it that way. And your implementation may differ from other people's implementations because they don't agree with you that that's the way to do it. There's no absolute right and wrong. One's always amazed that what seems to be absolutely the definitive way to do it. Very often it doesn't, is never proved completely wrong, but there's always some little tweak that you can put on the end. And you find this in things like coding theory, you know. Uh, we thought this was the best way to, uh, no. Somebody came up and said, actually, no, the basis of what you've done is right, but why not at the tail end do it this way? Because that makes no end of difference. It's a bit in a way like saying Newton was not wrong, he just only told part of the story and Einstein supplied the rest. And that can so often happen in programming. Though very casually you do get a completely new idea comes along and you say, hey, we could tear that up and do it this way. Now that's once in a very long time, that is. Is there the equivalent sometimes of somebody turning up to a Formula One track in a tractor? Yes, it's going to go round the track, but is it completely unsuitable. To all the wonderful undergrad students of computer science out there, forgive me. Yes, certainly sometimes you look at programs that have been handed in and they really are tractors trying to compete with, with McLaren Formula One cars. But yeah, it, they get round, but you know, in a very non-optimal way. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes, you know, one is amazed and delighted by the ingenuity that people can show in their choice of algorithms and data structures, something really new. And I mean, back to the other video I've done about you know poetry to programming, a lot of us feel, and somebody actually said this, was it Tony Hall or Dijkstra or Don Knuth? It is like writing a poem. If you get your implementation, your program to work, and you think it's beautiful, you get a great sense of satisfaction. And uh, somebody does, oh, uh, Somebody out there, tell me who it is. Somebody does call their completed programs poems. Somebody well know. Yeah, I know the feeling. Turing was a shocker for wanting to do it, even though it had been done before, and finding it all out for himself. Because he didn't want the grooves in his mind to be polluted by knowing how other people had done it. Now, that's fine, but at the end, when you've done it, you've got to say, has anybody done it differently before? And you've then got to take stock Turing was a bit of a shocker for doing it his way and not checking whether anybody had done it before. If you remember, he got his fellowship with tackling a problem and he didn't realise till he'd done it because he didn't want to look at how other people might have done it. They gave him the fellowship anyway, but he, he found it had been done four years earlier. But actually his way had some nice little tweaks in it and his tutor thought, yeah, do you know, that's nice. That little extra tweak you've done there, it's worth it. So implementation, sometimes reinvent the wheel, sometimes just go your own way. Yes, sometimes. that's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> two lambda expressions here, both of which take two inputs, x and y, and one chooses the first one, x, and one chooses the second one, y. So fair enough, what can we actually do with it? And designer, a programming language that we could all use, which became Haskell.